Now, if you've worked with Solidity, you've probably seen these things called events before. Or maybe you haven't seen something like events, but you've always wondered how Chainlink or the graph or some of these other off-chain protocols work under the hood. Or maybe you just love watching these VODs. In any case, in this video, we're gonna learn all about logging and events in Solidity, how to view them on Etherscan, and we'll work with them in Brownie as well. Now, if you like Hardhat, once again, I also have a Hardhat version of the code that we're gonna go over, and I've got a Hardhat blog as well. Links are in the description. All right, let's get froggy. Now it's the Ethereum Virtual Machine, or EVM, that makes a lot of these blockchains tick, like Ethereum. And the EVM has this functionality called a logging functionality. When things happen on a blockchain, the EVM writes these things to a specific data structure called its log. We can actually read these logs from our blockchain nodes that we run. In fact, if you run a node or you connect to a node, you can make a F get logs call to get the logs. Good function naming design. Get logs gets the logs. Now inside these logs is an important piece of logging called events. And this is the main piece that we're gonna be talking about today. Events allow you to print information to this logging structure in a way that's more gas efficient than actually saving it to something like a storage variable. These events and logs live in this special data structure that isn't accessible to smart contracts. That's why it's cheaper, because smart contracts can't access them. So that's the trade-off here. We can still print some information that's important to us without having to save it in a storage variable, which is gonna take up much more gas. Each one of these events is tied to the smart contract or account address that emitted this event in these transactions. Listening for these events is incredibly helpful. Let's say, for example, you want to do something every time somebody calls a transfer function. Instead of always reading all the variables and, and looking for some to flip and switch, all you have to do is say, listen for event. Listen for that event to be emitted instead of writing some weird custom logic to see if the parameters changed at the certain time and doing some weird stuff like that. Listen for these events. So a transaction happened, an event is emitted, and we can listen for these events. This is how a lot of off-chain infrastructure works. When you're on a website and that website reloads when a transaction completes, it actually was listening for that transaction to finish, listening for that event to be emitted so that it could reload or it could do something else. It's incredibly important for front ends. It's also incredibly important for things like Chainlink and the graph. Chainlink, for example, in the Chainlink network, a Chainlink node is actually listening for request data events for it to get a random number, make an API call, or et cetera. Sometimes there are way too many events and you need to index them in a way that makes sense so that you can query all these events that happen at a later date. The graph listens for these events and stores them in the graph so that they're easy to query later on. So events are incredibly powerful and they have a wide range of uses. They're also good for testing and some other stuff, but you get the picture, they're really sick. Now that we know what events are, let's look at what they look like, how we can use them and how we might use them in our smart contract development suite. Now here's what an event is going to look like. We have an event here called stored number. So we have basically a new type of event called stored number. We're saying, hey, Solidity, hey, smart contract, we have this new event thing. We're gonna be emitting things of typed stored number in the future. When we emit this event, it's gonna have these four parameters. It's gonna have a UINT256 for called old number, a UINT256 called new number, a UINT256 called added number, and an address called sender. Now for the astute people here, you might have noticed that there is another keyword in here, the indexed keyword, and this is a really important keyword. When we emit one of these events, there are two kinds of parameters. There are the indexed parameters and the non-indexed parameters. You can have up to three indexed parameters, and they're also known as topics. So if you see a topic, you know that that's going to be an indexed parameter. Indexed parameters are parameters that are much easier to search for and much easier to query than the non-indexed parameters. In fact, way back in that F get logs function, it even has a parameter allowing us to search for specific topics. So it's much more searchable than the non-indexed ones. The non-indexed ones are harder to search because they get ABI encoded and you have to know the ABI in order to decode them. If that confused you, don't worry about it. We're gonna explain it. Isn't this video great? Now this just told our smart contract that there is a new type of stored number, a new kind of event here. We need to actually emit that event in order to store that data into the logging data structure of the EVM. To do that, we need to do something that looks like this. 
This is what it looks like when we emit an event. It looks very similar to calling a function. So you call emit and then the name of the event and then you add all the parameters in there that you like. Here's the full example of a smart contract that has an event and it's gonna be the example that we're gonna walk through in Brownie. Again, if you want to see a hard hat edition of this, link in the description for the hard hat edition, both of this video and the blog. Now in this smart contract, whenever anybody calls the store function, we're going to emit this event. Here's an example of a transaction where we called the store function with a value of one. Let's look into the logs to see what this event actually is gonna look like. An event is gonna be broken down like so. The address of the contract or account the event is emitted from, the topics are the index parameters of the event, data. This is the ABI encoded non-index parameters of the event. What does this mean? This means that we took those parameters that were non-indexed, we matched them together with their ABI or application binary interface, pumped them through an encoding algorithm, and boom, this is what we got. If you have the ABI, they're very easy to decode. If you don't have the ABI, they are very hard to decode. These non-indexed parameters cost less gas to pump into the logs and are harder to query, like we said. So if you think something's important, but like not that important, you dump it in data. You dump it into non-indexed. Now in this particular contract, since we have verified the code, we verified the contract, Etherscan knows what the ABI is and we can view this in deke or decoded mode. Hex mode is obviously the non-decoded mode or in its raw hex or hexadecimal or encoded mode. You can read more about the layout of these events in the Solidity docs. All right, now that we've learned what events are, let's jump into Brownie to learn how to use them in our smart contracts and access them with Brownie. All the code that we're working with is available in the GitHub in the description. So if you wanna follow along, you wanna copy paste, great. Uh, sometimes it's really helpful to follow along with me because then you can understand you know, how I'm coding and what I'm coding and why I'm coding. Uh, the way I'm coding. So, all right, so we're going to create a new Brownie project, Brownie init. I'm going to kind of speed through getting set up and getting started here. Now, if you haven't worked with Brownie before and you're unfamiliar with Brownie and you're unfamiliar with VS Code, uh, we've I've dropped a link in the description to setting up your text editor with Brownie to getting a text editor like VS Code if you've never worked with any of this before. Um, so definitely check that out. But anyways, let's keep going. Let's move forward. Now that we have our projects, let's go ahead and just grab that uh, let's go ahead and just create that contract, right? Call it simple storage .sol. And again, I'm going to kind of speed through this. So if you're confused with, you know, what all this is and what's going on, uh, definitely check out that 16 hour free code camp video. Um, I'm going to drop a timestamp in there where we start doing some, uh, some VS code stuff here, but we're going to do pragma solidity carrot 0.8.7 conch contract simple storage un256 favorite number event stored number right so this is going to be our event stored number so this is going to be our event here uh, that we're going to submit or excuse me that we're going to emit and we're going to say this event has a un256 indexed number or excuse me old number, a uint256 indexed new number, a uint256 uh, non-indexed added number, and an address sender. Perfect. So this is the event that we're going to omit in a little bit, right? We're not going to omit it quite, uh, uh, omit it quite yet, but we will in just a second. So we're going to create a function, a function called store. We're going to give it a UN256 favorite, favorite number. We're going to make it public. And this function is just going to store a new favorite number to our old favorite number here, right? So we could do something like, you know, favorite number equals underscore favorite number. Boom. And that's all we wanted to do. However, maybe we want to emit an event to tell people, hey, something has happened, something has changed. So we're gonna omit it with omit stored number. We're gonna give it favorite number, underscore favorite number, right? So the old number, oh, actually, let's do it like this. 
we'll, we'll change it afterwards. That's not great practice, but you know, whatever. So we'll do the old number. We'll do the new number, which is being passed in. We'll add them together. So we'll say favorite number plus favorite number. And then we'll say the sender, which will be, will be uh, message.sender. Perfect. And then we'll go ahead and change them, right? So typically you'd want to change them first and then emit the event, but you know, whatever. And then we'll just make this favorite number public uh, so we can have a getter, uh, so we can read this favorite number uh, off the blockchain. Uh, in my original uh, contract, I had a getter here, but you know, this is the same as having like a function retrieve that returns the server number. And that's it. And that's all we uh, we need to do here. So let's go ahead now and we'll create a script, right? We're going to create our deploy and store dot pi script. And what this is going to do is it's going to deploy this contract and then we're going to call that store function so we can see how this works, right? So we're going to do def deploy. Um, we're going to pass for now and we're going to do def main. Uh, deploy. So when we run a brownie script, it always calls the main function. Uh, and inside our main function, we're going to add our code in this deploy here. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to get an account. So we're going to do account equals get account. Um, I usually have um, a pretty cool setup I do for getting accounts. Um, I'll make a uh, brownie config yaml. Again, I'm going to speed through this a little bit. I'll do wallets from key private key. And now it'll pull from a private key. And I'm going to make a, another script called helpful scripts init init.py. I've got some other videos where I explain kind of what's actually going on with uh, some of these helpful scripts I make. So we'll do helpful scripts.py. Paste it in here. But basically, I have this get account function which checks to see if I'm on a local blockchain. If I'm on a local blockchain, it just returns some dummy accounts. Uh, otherwise, it's going to return um, an account uh, that you know with with actual you know funds in it or or whatever. Anyways, so we're going to say we're going to import that in here. We're going to say from scripts dot helpful scripts import get account. Great. And now if we're on a local chain, we'll have a dummy account. And I know I'm kind of speeding through this, but uh, you can use, you know, you can use whatever account getting method you're familiar with um, to do that. Uh, once we have that, now we're going to deploy our contract. We're going to say simple storage equals simple storage dot deploy. And we're going to deploy this, right? So we're going to say from account. And boom, we got to import this from Brownie. So we'll say from Brownie import Brownie or simple storage. After we deploy this, we're going to do uh, store TX equals simple storage dot store. We're going to store the value one from account. And then we're going to do store TX dot wait one. So what we're doing is we're deploying this this contract, this contract simple storage, right? Real small, real small contract here. And then we're going to deploy it with this deploy thing here. And then we're going to uh, store it. And I know I'm going a little bit fast. So feel free to slow me down, pause, etc. Now, here's where the spice of life happens. So we have this transaction, this transaction receipt. Now this transaction object has a whole bunch of stuff. So if I do print store TX right now, and I run this on a development chain, let's see what happens. So we're gonna do brownie run scripts, deploy and store. And if you don't specify a network, it's going to automatically do ganache. So let's go ahead and run this. And great, so we get this transaction object here. In brownie, this transaction object has a whole bunch of stuff. Right, but we can see our transactions above. We can see, okay, we deployed it. Uh, we stored one. Here's our transaction. And this is the transaction that has all the events in it. So what we can do is we can print uh, store TX dot events. And this is going to have all those events uh, in it that we can see. So if we run the script again, now that we're printing out store TX dot events, we'll see we now have this, this object here, right? So we have an ordered dictionary old number, new number, added number, and sender. 
So old number and new number are the indexed parameters or the topics, and then added number and sender are going to be uh, the, the non-indexed. We can read them here because we have the ABI, right? We, we have the contract code and we know what these two are called, right? If we didn't have the contract code, this would show up as mumble jumble garble, right? These, these would be the only ones we would be able to read and we'd have to ha get the ABI to decode these. But in any case, boom, and that's it, right? And, and that's how we can get uh, anything. So since there's only one event, we could even say, you know, print the events at zero. Say print the events at zero and let's get the old number, right? So that's, that's all we want to get here. Let's try it again. And boom, right? Zero was the old number. Now let's print the new number. What's the new number? It's going to be one, right? Because we're storing one. Boom, new number is one. And that's exactly how you can work with events. Now let's turn this up a notch. Let's deploy this to Etherscan and see what it looks like on Etherscan. Because working with the Etherscan events uh, and, and understanding how those events work and how what they look like on Etherscan is really important too, okay? So I'm gonna deploy this to Coven. And if you're unfamiliar with how to deploy this to Coven, I've got another link in the description um, for, for learning how to deploy to an actual test net, getting your test environment set up there. Um, you're, you're gonna need a couple of environment variables. I already have them all set, so I'm just gonna go ahead and deploy. But again, check the description if you'd like to see that. So first, I'm gonna verify this contract by just doing simple storage equals simple storage dot deploy. I'm gonna do comma publish source equals true. Uh, I have an etherscan API key, which is why I can do this. Uh, again, link in the description to get that. Um, but now I'm gonna do brownie run scripts, deploy and store network Coven, okay? And again, if you've never worked with Coven before, if you've never uh, used an API key before, don't worry. Links are all over the descriptions, my friends. Uh, and, and if something doesn't make sense um, or you can't find one of these links, make an issue on the GitHub repository associated with this video uh, and that will help you out. So, all right, great. So we've deployed this, we've verified it. Let's go take a look at this on chain. So here we are in the Coven ether scan of that contract that we just deployed and verified. If we go to a contract, we can see everything in here, uh, the real simple contract, right? No sweat. If we go to transactions, if we go to this store transaction, this is the one that should have that event, right? So if we go to it, we can see all this stuff in here about it, which is great. Uh, we also see this logs section, right? So this is the logs of this transaction, right? And so we can read this as such. Address is here, right? The whole, all that stored number stuff that we talked about, and we have the topics. Now this first one, this topic zero, is always gonna be this, the whole signature of the event, right? So this hex represents kind of the whole event here. And then each one of these is gonna be those index parameters, right? So. We could even look at the hex if we want, but yeah, we can go ahead and decode them here. So this is gonna be what? It's gonna be old number, and this is gonna be new number. Now here's our data section. If we didn't have this verified, it would probably, it would just show up like this, right? It's just a bunch of, bunch of code here, right? Since we know what it is, since we know we have the ABI, we know that it's gonna be added number 77, and then sender and this address here. And that's really everything you need to know about events.